So on page uh, P in Shar Yichud Vemunah, the second section of Tanya, Pedik Vov. Pedik Vov is a is a continuation of Chapter Four, because Chapter Four, as I said before, the 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 end of Chapter Four has a bracket, and it really continues throughout Chapter Five. So really, Chapter Five is one long parenthesis as I've explained, and uh, I heard from Abiyoyal something, what I told you, Baruch Hashem, you know, when you are on the right track, <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you, you can think like great minds sometimes. Abiyoyal said that it seems like the second, at the end of chapter 5, there should be two brackets. One for, f- to, as a, the small bracket which is at the end of chapter 5, where he quotes the Zayar of Ayakiel. And then there should be really another bracket, which is the conclusion of the bracket of chapter 4. What did he speak about in the beginning of chapter 4? He spoke about the verse in Tehillim, Kishem Meshum Mogin Hashem Elohim. Just like the sun, the, glo- the sun globe. <clears throat> And it has uh, an arctic, a casing, a cover, and that's the way the world was able to benefit from the sun and not burn up because of the heat of the sun. So too is Hashem Elohim. This is from King David Amelech, has nothing to do with Hasidism, and Kabbalah, has to do with Tehillim. But the, the, the verse is very enigmatic, uh, what's going on over here. So Hasidus Chabad, and the Alter Eben, particularly in Shari Yichud Vemunen, which we're learning in chapter 4, we learn explains it. In chapter 4, he emphasized the Yudke Vovke. He didn't spend any time on the Elohim. He said that the Yudke Vovke really is Hey Vov Hey, which means Hoive, Lahavos, to create. And the Yud, that's the beginning of the Yudke Vovke, denotes constant, uh, constant creation. Right? And he brought the Posik in Job, in Eov, Kocha Yeose Eov, etc. Because really, you don't need a Yud. Hey, Vav, hey, God is the creator. You don't need a Yud. <laughs> We're so used to saying Yud Ke Vav Ke, but if you, if, you, if you look at the Hebrew translation of the word Hoiva, it means creator. The Yud doesn't really add anything. Says the Alter Rebbe, wrong. The U does add something, something very important, and in fact, it's the first of the four letters. The idea of tamidiyut, from the word tamid, constant creation, and we spoke a lot about it. So I don't want to repeat it now. But then the Alter Rebbe said, and since this is the case, Hashem is called Hagodel Vagibor. We, we refer to God in the Amida and other places the great one, the great God, and the mighty God. God was great, and, and Gibor is mighty. What are the two? I mean, it, it, you know, in, in Torah and, and, in, and in Chazal, in our language of our rabbis and teachers, we don't just throw out words. It's not like a, a speaker who, you know, wants to uh, enthrall, enthrall the, 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 his audience so they use this word and that word, and they go up and they go down. I mean, this is not uh, this is not uh, you know um, a drama uh, type of, of presentation. This is true and truth and real Torah, Chazal, rabbis, sages of the Talmud. So the explanation is, Hagodel refers to God's Chesed. This is all from chapter four. What I'm saying now, and Agibar refer, refers to God's Gevura. That not only is God a God of, of imparting his influence into the world, but he's also a God that uses restraint, which is gavura, discipline, to enhance the influence. And we spoke about that, that the difference between a shield and a vessel, we spoke about that, and the, and the additional concept and the chiddush, the novelty, in the brackets of chapter four and, and continuing chapter five is the idea of the the, the keli, that the shem elokim, 
of Gvura isn't just isn't just Hillel a blockage, the, which would denote a a negativity, you know, do not, don't, but rather it's a positivity. It's a way of getting the or the influence to reach deeper, to be more refined so that the recipients, us, can benefit from it. Because if Hashem, if God were to just give his influence in a limitless way of chesed, it would overwhelm us. Okay. Now, in chapter 6, the Alter Rebbe starts explaining the second, the, the second name of God, Elohim. Right? Because the Pusik that he quotes from Tilim in chapter 4 says, it says, Ki Shemesh Umogain Hashem Elohim. So he explained the Hashem, the name God, in, in, in context of that this verse and the, the whole discussion here. But Elohim, not Gvura, he's explained already, Gvura. But Elohim, he hasn't explained. So here, he's going to explain the same idea within the name Elohim. And, and there's quite a bit of language here, but we will get to, we will go through it. Let's go. Pedic Vov, chapter 6. Vihine Shem Elikim, the name Elikim, who Shem Midas HaGvura. This is the name of God, which symbolizes the attribute of severity, of judgment. Vat Simpsum, and the, and the idea of the contraction of the, of the, of the infinite light of God. Vlochein, who Gamkein, since Elohim is Gvura and Simtsum, therefore its numerical equivalent happened is also the, the word in Hebrew, Hateva, the nature, which you have the He, Tes, Vez, Ayan equals 86. And you'll notice here, Hevra, that the Alter Rebbe says, Hugam came. Hila, why does it say Gamkin? Who the Gematria Teva? Baruch, right? It, it, the name Elohim, which is Gevura and Simtum, it's Gematria is Hateva. It doesn't say that. Don't read what it says. It says Gamkin. It is also, what is the Alter Rebbe adding with the words Gamkin? Hevra, when you learn a piece of Tanya, you have to stop. And look at the words and ask yourself, why are these additional words there too? And the answer is, for someone to say, and I've told you this many times over the years we're learning together, that the gematria, the, 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 numerical, the, the numerical equivalent of a Hebrew word, is the idea, is foolish. It's not the idea, it's a gematria. A gematria means that the idea, being that it's true on its own, also touches and reaches the world of gematria. You hear the difference? <laughs> right? In other words, if we find, say, a gematria for Moshe, Moshe's name, Moshe Drucker, Moshe, we've come up with a gematria. Because of that, we say, that's why he lives in Fort Lauderdale. And that's why he has two daughters. And that's why this, and that's why that. Whatever, right? Right? And now, it's a very nice game, and it's very cute, and it could, and it could even be true, true. But at the end of the day, that's not why. <laughs> Moshe is who Moshe is. Children, he's, he has children. He lives in Fort Lauderdale because he lives in Fort Lauderdale. And each of those things has a reason. Now, when you put it all together, you can also find the same concept expressed also in a gematria. But not that the gematria is koveya. This is very important, this is what I'm saying now. Not, in other words, Koveya means what makes it real, what makes it emes, not the gematria. <laughs> so there's this, you know, this thing in the community, gematria. Oh, I'll give you, you know, you get up at a simcha, at a bar mitzvah, bas mitzvah, this or that, and you say a nice gematria. Right, it's cute, it's nice, it's, it's very nice, Hillel. But we have to know that, that it, it, it doesn't create the reality. 
Once the reality is created, if you have a certain understanding of the, of the world of gematria, it also finds itself, expresses itself in gematria. And that's what Alter Rebbe is saying here. It's not that Elohim becomes tzimtzum and gvura, judgment and contraction, because it equals hateva. No. Elohim in its own right is the concept of tzimtzum and, and tzimtzum and gvura. And it happens to be that it expresses itself in the word the nature. Why? Because the world of nature, the world, the concept of nature on its own is gvura. What is nature? Hear this, Chavra. Avram, what is nature? Nature is the skies of God, hiddenness of God. It's from Hashem, but we don't see it. We see the sun and the moon, everything's happening naturally, right? Nature, natural. It's the, it's, so, so, it's gvura. It's limiting, it's symptoms, it's contracting the ain't of the infinity of God. So the word, the word ha-teva, the nature, is demonstrative of tzimtzum. That's what he says here. Let's continue. Lefi, and why is it? Shemaster ha-oyer shelamayla. This is what I just said. Because nature conceals the, the, the light from above, from Hashem. Hamahava ha that creates and sustains the universe, venire, and it appears in the when we're in the mode of nature. Ki'ilu ha'olam oimet. Next page, top of one sixty. It appears as though the world stands, exists, umisnaheik, and conducts itself. Beterech hateva in a natural way. Hence, I'm an atheist. Someone says, I'm an agnostic. I believe, but nat- nature. That's right. That's how powerful the force of Gvura and Simpson is that it that, that Hashem made. Do you, do you understand what happened over here? Hashem made. Hashem made it. And what did he make? Something that can deny him. That's an oxymoron. But from our perspective, it's not an oxymoron. It's not a contradiction. He puts out two forces. One of the force of lemailemeteva, transcending nature, seeing godliness, understanding it comes from God. And then at the same time, he creates a force to block it. So from our perspective, it's, it, from our perspective, it makes sense. But from Hashem's perspective, Seemingly, it's a contradiction. In other words, are you a God that gives and, 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 and is recognizable, or are you a God that wants to be hidden? And how can, how can you, the same creator, make a force against yourself? You hear that? And the answer is, that's what he did, because that's true. Uh, Isser asked about Ein Sof. True Ein Sof, Isser, I answered you, it refers to Atmos. True essence is, from God's perspective, the ability to be recognized and the same ability, same ability to be disguised. It's the same God. But but when we're in the world of nature, Teva, Teva, in other words, Teva, from Hashem's perspective, is like Lamaila Teva. Nature is just like transcending nature. It's just two modes. But from our perspective, there's a difference. And that's, that's called in Hasidus, you must have learned it, heard the words, Das Elyon and Das Tachton. The higher knowledge, the higher Das, and the lower. What, what does that mean? It means simply, are we, are we living with the Das Elyon in the sense of Hashem being the truth and the creator, both in, in revealing himself and in disguising himself, 
Or from our perspective, das tachtum, there's a difference. And when you live with das tachtum, you come to one conclusion. You know what that conclusion is? God is great, but there are times and places and things that he, he kind of allows us to, to, to come to the front. He takes a back seat and he says, you, you, you lead. Das Elyon is that even in our, in our world, he's always leading. It's just a matter of whether he's leading through the transcendence it's a it's 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 you know apparent or he's leading in a way of tzimtzum and that's the whole vert that we're going to continue over here that does that that shem elokim is a name of hashem hashem elokim ki shem shumogin hashem elokim the simile between hashem elokim is just like the sun the globe the sun globe and the ray of the sun and even deeper, as we're going to say later. Let's continue. V'shem Elikim Zeh, and this name of Elikim, who mogim v'nartik, it's a shield and a casing. L'shem Yudke Vovke, L'shem Hashem, Shem Avaya. What, how does it, how is it a cover? Halim Ha'ir, to conceal the light, V'achayis, and the energy, Hanim Shech M'shem Hashem, which comes from the Yudke Vovke, and the, the Shem Hashem creates something from nothing. And the Shem Elohim, what does it do? The, the Shem Elohim says that this energy of God being the creator should, be, should not be revealed to the creatures. Because if they were because if it were to be revealed in its pristine state, boof, boom, but wouldn't exist. Annul, the existence would no longer be. So this gevura, this restriction, this judgment, and this contraction, who gamkein, again the words gamkein, it is also... Pchinas Chesed. You hear that? It's also a Chesed. The Gavura of Hashem is also a kindness. Moshe. How? She'a'olam yibone boy. Because Hashem wants the world to be built. How can you build a world? How can you let, have an existence emerge if God is a parent? And, and God's all over, and God's shining full force, nothing else can emerge. Imagine if the sun globe, you say, we, we spoke before this year, it's hot now in, in, in Florida. Imagine if it was 200 degrees now, you couldn't take it. You couldn't take it. You could buy then a house to, tomorrow in Florida for, for $5,000, right? Who wants to live in 200 degrees of weather? In other words, if there is a gallus, if there's a revelation of, of Yudke Vovke, the world would cease to be. So therefore, oh, and since Hashem, Chesed Yibona, the verse says, Isser, how did Hashem build the world with Chesed? So the Alter Rebbe, look what he does over here. He's, he's, he's applying Chesed Yibona, not to Chesed. Baruch, you see, he applies it to Kvura. He's using the verse, Chesed Yibona, to explain the gvura of Hashem. That the gvura of Hashem, the symptom of Hashem, is doing us a big favor. So we can sit here and learn Hasidus and see each other on the screen. And that would not be able to be if it was only chesed, the yudke vavke. Beautiful pshat. Let's continue. V'zuhi p'chines gvura. So one second. So what? So here's the question: What type of gvura is this? Says the Alter Rebbe Menashe, this is a level of gvura haklula bechesed that's incorporated in the chesed. Right? It's not. It's not chesed, pure chesed, which is only giving, give, give, give. 
No tough love at all. It's a tough love within chesed. So is tough love gvura or chesed? Menashe, if someone asks you, is tough love gvura or chesed? The answer is tough love is chesed. But the manifestation of that chesed comes through tough love, i.e. through gvura. When the child wants the knife, or you take the knife away from him or her, what are you doing? You're doing a favor. You're doing a kindness to the child. You're not being mean. Well, it sure looks that way. That's right. The manifestation is in a gvuradik way, in a restricting way, in a judgmental way. But the truth is, I'm doing you the biggest favor. That's what he says here. So we call that gvura haklula bechesed. The gvura that is incorporated and included in the chesed. From the inclusion of the middles, of the attributes, one within the other, we see it's apparent the Iu that Hashem, his force, and his causations, meaning his kalim, are one. Shehemi Doisav, which refers to the middles of God. The attributes of Hashem, Chesed, Gvurat, Tferes, Netzach, Yisait, etc., all the six attributes with Hashem are one. Not that the attributes are an adjunct to Hashem. They're part and parcel of Hashem. Since they are truly united with God in a complete way, in an absolute way, Therefore, they are united one with to the other, and they are incorporated one within the other. As Elio says in the introduction to Tikkun Ezoya, quote, the aunt who and you are referring to God, the essence, Hashem, the kosher loin, who binds. Umeyachad loin, who binds them, referring to the midos, umeyachad loin, and unites the midos, the attributes, unites them all together, together, etc. Vechuli, ubar minoch, and without you, it's and it, it, less yichud be eloi. There is no true yichud in in the in the upper, in the supernal. In other words, where is yichud felt most? Where is unity felt most? in the essence. The essence of Hashem is able and, and unites the, uh, the opposing forces of Chesed and Gvura, and it's all one, because it's from Him, HaGad, who is one. So the Hashem that is one expresses it, it, it's Himself in the oneness vis-a-vis both all attributes, and all attributes are all one with him. Continuing. Now the Alter Rebbe answers the question that he asked in chapter 1. Why does it say, You should know God today and make your heart be attentive. What's the additional of make your heart be attentive after saying you should know God? If you know God, of course, your heart's going to be attentive. This is the additional meaning in the words, you shall make your heart be attentive. Ki Hashem Elohim, for Hashem is Elohim. Pirush. Remember, I've told you many times, Pirush, Dr. Rebbe now, Pirush means the explanation is, in other words, what's, what's the answer to the question? That these two names of Hashem and Elohim, Hemechot Mamesh, are really one and the same. Shagam Shem Elikim. That because, and ha, why is that? Because the, even the name of Elohim, that contracts and conceals the energy in the force, who Prinus Chesed is really a Chesed. Kamay Shem Hashem, just like the name Yud Kevovke. Mishum, why? Shemidoy Shavshal HaKadosh Baruch because all the attributes of Hashem, who Mishyachdos Imoy, they unite with him, be Yichud Gomer. Vuhu and Hashem, Ushmoy and his name, Echod are one, Shemidosov, Heim Shmoisov, because God's mitos are his names. You call God a God of kindness, a God of Vura, a God of Rachamim. So the mitos of Hashem 
are not an adjunct to him, but they are, they are him. They're, they're him as expressed through the middles. Hengshwat in Cain, if so, Mimela, therefore, automatically, Teda, you should know, Sheba Shemayim Imal, and the heavens and above, Alohoretz Betok, and the earth and below, Einoid, there's nothing besides him. Pirush, what does this mean in the, in the verse in conjunction to what we're learning? Shegam Ha'oretz Achumris, that even this earth, the corporeal earth, Shenidis Yesh Gomor Le'en Kel, that appears to be ego, existence, on its own, everyone sees it and says, hey, it's here, it's real. I am the Ephes Mamish, it is not. And zero, Mamish, Legabe HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in comparison to Hashem, why? Kishem Elikim, ain't a Milo Mitzamsem, because the name of Elikim is, it, it is only a concealment and a contraction, El Eletachtoinim, that's what I told you earlier, only for us below. For us, it's real. There's concealment, there's nature. Where's God? But, but, below, next line, but not in God, from God's perspective. since He and His name, Elohim, Echad, are one. Also, the earth and what's below. Hain, I am the Ephes Mamish, from God's perspective, are not the Gabi HaKadosh Baruch in comparison to God. Ve'en and Nikroiz B'Shem Klau, and they don't even have a name. Afilu B'Shem Oit. Now here the Alter Rebbe adds another nuance. It's not only that it doesn't exist, but you could say that it's not valuable, or it's overwhelmed by the light of God. The Alter Rebbe says it doesn't have any existence. Ain Oit. Right? What does it say in the verse? You should know God. You should make your heart be attentive in the heavens and above. And the, and be, that what? Ainoid. There's nothing else. Says the Alter Rebbe, we're not talking about there's no other God. Right? That was the, the Alter Rebbe said right in chapter 1 of Shari Yichud. If that was the understanding of the verse, it's, it, it's, it's superfluous. Of course there's no other God. Someone who's learning Torah and believes the Torah knows there's no other God except God, one God, monotheism. So what's the Ainoid? There's no other existence. What, what does it mean there's no other existence? There isn't even an existence that you could say is no fight to God. The existence doesn't begin. From God's perspective, the existence doesn't begin. All existence is, is God. is in a manifestation of God. So it's God. Not the way God forbid, by the way, Spinoza said that the table is God. That's heresy. That's, that's mamish heresy. You're not allowed to, a Jew is not allowed to think that, that, that the table is God. The table has godly energy in it. That's very different than saying the table is God. The table is not God. Because number one, if you say the table is God, you're limiting God to the table. And if you say he's the table and the chair, so you're limiting twice. So you put, you, your whole analysis of God is a limited God. When we talk about Hashem, he's transcendental. He's not limited. So what does that mean? That means that the table and the chair have an energy of, of Hashem in it. They're sustained by God. The word we use, godliness. Not that the table is God. The table has godliness in it. That's what he's saying here. So, the, so he says over here, Even with the name Oid, Einoid, Shehu Lashem Tafel. What does Oid mean? It's ancillary, it's Tafel, it's secondary. Kemay Merazal, Chazal say, Yehuda V'Oid L'Kro. This is, the Gemara says sometimes, something that's known, there's a verse, so why bring kind of, uh, if there's an open verse about something, quote the verse. Why do you have to give a logical explanation? So the Gemara says, Yehuda avoid the Kral. There's the verse, but this is a, 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 a secondary explanation. Right? And this is, we know there's a verse, but this is kind of a little, you know, uh, salt and pepper on the food. There's the food. 
There's the first, there's the main thing, and then there is a, a, a support. So Dal Terebbe says, Einoid, there isn't even that. There isn't, there isn't no existence outside of God, even in the most minute way, in an adjunct way. Let's continue. Okeguf, shutafel, neshama, and this is similar, at this point he says it's similar to the body, which is ancillary to the soul, to the energy within the body. Just often. It says in Tehillim, I will praise God with my life. Azamra, I will sing to God, be oidi with all my might. But the word oidi is used, says the Alter Rebbe, top of Pei Aleph now, next page. Shahachayim nimshachim, life is drawn, Mishayim Yud Kevavke. Look in the Pasuk, it says, look what it says, uh, Isser. Ahalo Hashem Yud Kevavke Bechayai. And then it says, Azamra, I will sing Lelokai from the word Elokim. So Dal Terebbe says that the Davida Melech, using these words, were very precise. Because the, the Chayai, which represents the goof, is, is, comes from Shem Hashem. Vehoid. And he says, Azamra Lelikai be od. I will sing to God with all my might. He says, Vehoid. I'm sorry, just the opposite. Chayas represents the neshama. The ha'oid, shua guf, and the ha'oid, which is the body, ha'tofel, which, which is ancillary to the soul, that comes from Shem Elohim. So Dr. Rebbe says that this verse is, is supporting the previous idea. The fi, shah neshama, let's continue, e'na mahava ha'guf me'ayin le'yesh. Who creates the body? The soul? No, the soul is created by Hashem. But Hashem, who does create everything, ex nihilo, something for nothing, everything is annulled into existence, it's like to God, like the light of the sun, the ray of the sun within the sun. And tomorrow we will talk about the, this last idea. Any questions or um, you want to think about it? <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. Zayt Kazun. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. All the best. Bye-bye.